OSPF authentication is also something that we need to be very familiar with as a CCIE security candidate. There are two types of authentication that OSPF supports. It supports plain text as well as MD5 authentication. Now we can configure this in the routing process or we can also configure it on individual interfaces. So there's two ways really to apply it. And I'll show you both methods. The key is still gonna be applied on each interface regardless of whether we enable authentication in the routing process or on the interface. We can also configure two key IDs on an interface if we have a shared interface and we wanna use different keys for different peers. And even though we do support plain text and MD5, you probably knew I was gonna say this, you wanna use MD5 whenever possible. Plain text is not recommended, it's not good practice. We wanna avoid it, we wanna stay away from plain text as much as we possibly can. But I'm gonna show you how to configure both. So this is how to configure OSPF plain text authentication using the first method, which is applying the authentication inside the routing process. So the first step would be to create the key on the interface. And remember, this is done on a per interface basis. So what I've got here is interface F00, IP OSPF authentication key C1 cache CO. And that applies a key. Now the other side has to have the same key. So you might wanna copy and paste and apply this on the other side. The next thing that we're going to do is configure the authentication within the routing process. So we go into router OSPF 10, which is our process ID for this particular router, and we give it the area zero authentication command. Now, any interface that is in area zero, even if there's other interfaces, interfaces other than F00, they will now require authentication. So they better have a key configured on them, or you're going to be in trouble. Now, the second method is on a per interface basis. So we still apply the key to the interface just as we did in the previous example. Only this time we're gonna configure authentication on the interface as well with the IP OSPF authentication command. We don't have to go into the routing process. We just do this on a per interface basis. Make sure we do it on the other side and make sure that we use the same key and we're good to go.